Hello. When we look at a reaction in chemistry, we normally do this by starting off thinking about reactants and products. This leads us to a word equation, and then we can construct a balanced symbol equation. This is fine, but it doesn't tell the whole story of the reaction. It's like the reactants are the once upon a time part, and the products are the happy ever after bit. What we want though, is the rest of the story, how we get to the happy ending. We call this story the reaction mechanism. Any reaction mechanism will involve a number of scenes or chapters called steps, like this one. Please don't get scared, this is not intended to be a horror story. But to tackle a monster like this, we need to be armed, and our choice of weapon is the curly arrow. Let's see what we mean by these. When we look closely at what happens in reactions, we realise that it's all down to what some of the electrons get up to. This means that to follow a chemical reaction, we must track these electrons. We do this tracking task by using curly arrows. So we have these curly arrows in our quiver, so let's take one out. What we see is a double-headed arrow, which shows the movement of two electrons. But hold on a bit, what's this one? It is only single-headed. It must mean that we use this type when only one electron is off on an adventure. What these curly arrows do is show us where the electron on electron start at one end of the arrow, and where they end up at the head of the arrow. Let's see this in practice. When hydrogen bromide reacts with ethene, bromoethane is formed, like this. The mechanism for this, by the way, is electrophilic addition, and the story is as follows. The hydrogen bromine bond is polarised, so the hydrogen is slightly positive, shown here by the delta positive sign. A pair of electrons from ethene's double bond finds this hydrogen highly desirable and move out to meet it, forming a brand spanking new carbon-hydrogen bond. At the same time as this happens, the bonding electrons from the hydrogen bromide are no longer shared, but are fully claimed by the bromine atom. So we have another curly arrow, from the HBr bond onto the bromine atom itself. This turns the bromine atom into a negative bromine ion and an ion. Looking back at what was the carbon-carbon double bond, we notice that the other carbon has become a carbocation, since it's lost its fair share of two electrons. Please note the way the arrows are drawn. They show where the electrons start out and where they end up, either between the atoms when a new bond is formed, or onto an atom itself when a negative ion is produced. Let's look at the next step of a love story. The first thing we notice is that not only do we have a bromine anion, but that we must show the non-bonding or lone pair of electrons. Predictably, this lone pair will form a new bond between the bromine and the positive carbon atom. Our curly arrow shows this by starting on this pair of electron of bromines and finishing midway between the Br- and the C+, forming a new covalent bond. So bromoethane is made, and our tale of love and adventure is complete. I hope you can see that using curly arrows illustrates our story superbly and demonstrates what fine storytellers we can be. So just to summarise, this is what our reaction mechanism looks like. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.